Hello, I'm Krista Wood, the Executive Director of Heartland Cares, and this is a new show today, uh, HIV 101, but today it's a special show featuring World AIDS Day that's coming up December 1st. So we're going to talk a little bit about World AIDS Day and what it means, and uh, we've got some very special guests here today that I'd like to introduce you to. So if we can just go around and introduce ourselves. We'll start with you, Ann. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm Ann Farrell. I'm an I am an RN. I am a volunteer, a very faithful volunteer. At Heartland Cares. At Heartland Cares. <laughs> love the people and love being down there. This is my second family. We love you too, Ann. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Isaac, you've been on the show many times before. Oh, yes. We're glad to have you back. Miss it. I'm Isaac, and uh, I'm also a volunteer at Heartland Cares. And I'm also a client because I am HIV positive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I enjoy what I do, enjoy the people that I'm around. I'm enjoying life today. Okay, great. Thank you. Judy? I'm Judy Calhoun, um, past board of directors team there at Heartland Cares. For six years I served. Uh, HIV and AIDS and prevention has always been very, very pro, you know, part of my, large part of my life as an educator. I know the value of getting information and knowledge out to people. And when I first became involved with HIV and AIDS about 14 years ago now in November, um, there just weren't very many African Americans with a voice uh, talking in a positive means to the community. And so I thought I'd take up that baton and run with it and I've not regretted it. Great. Well, you've done a lot of really good work. Thank Thanks you. for being here. Thanks. And Angie. I'm Angie. I'm a case manager at Heartland Cares. I do adherence with folks there at the clinic and I've been there for about six and a half years and still love it. Okay, great. Well today we're going to talk about, we've got a new event coming up. Well it's an event we have every year, yeah. um, but it's um, probably, I would say, one of the biggest um, celebrations and memorials that we do for HIV and AIDS and it's World AIDS Day mm -hmm. and it's December 1st uh, of, of every year and what day is that? This year? Tuesday. Tuesday. It's on a Tuesday this mm -hmm. year so Tuesday December 1st um, we're going to have a World AIDS Day event and um, Angie I think you're in charge at the clinic or on the team uh, for the World AIDS Day program. You want to tell us just a little bit about what's going to be going on there? Sure. It's an after-dinner event. Um, an after-dinner after event? After-dinner event. Um, so we'll we need to eat first. Yes, eat first. <laughs> um, desserts and, and cocktails will be available. Um, it's from 7 to 10 mm -hmm. at a Madison Hall mm -hmm. on Madison Street. And it's, um, like you said, a celebration of life and um, a time to remember folks who've passed away and um, everyone get together and learn and um, just be together for that day. Okay, and so um, <coughs> how, how do we dress? It's cocktail attire. Okay. Um, little black dress would do great. Okay. Um, or jeans and a frilly top. Jeans and a frilly top would be <laughs> fine. We, we really don't care, we just want people there to be together okay. and to remember. And so there'll be dessert and cocktails and what, uh, is there a cost? Um, the tickets are free, so um, we just, want people there. We want people okay. to be together so um, they can contact the clinic and ask for me mm -hmm. and um, let me know how many tickets they'd like. Um, we'd like to pack the house this year. So, Okay, so standing room only. Yes, yes. A lot to do. So they can call you at the clinic, at the clinic? and that's Heartland Cares mm -hmm. at 444-8183. Option two and ask for Angie and Option you can leave me a voicemail if you'd like. Okay, so World AIDS Day. Um, it is a celebration and it is a memorial, but let's kind of go backwards a little bit. Let's um, let's let's talk about um, why. Before we even start talking about World AIDS Day, let's talk about why we're so committed to HIV and, and to Heartland Cares here, because I know each of us come from a different place and. I know when people ask me, you know, where I work, you know, they, I always get the. I, I love to observe people when I tell them <laughs> what I do and where I work and usually the first response is um, where is that right you know is that in you know is that around here and you know do we have do we have AIDS in Paducah mm. you know that's usually the second thing yeah. I hear sometimes I'll get people kind of back up from me mm -hmm. like 
You know, do you have it? Mm -hmm. uh, and do I need to be concerned that you have it? Um, but I know Heartland Cares has been around uh, for 11 years. Uh, we started in 96 as a housing program mm -hmm. uh, just to house people who have HIV or AIDS. And we've advanced to a, a complete total program with all types of care, what we call kind of a one-stop shop. So we do prevention and care and support services, counseling, all types mm -hmm. of things. But what, what, what is it about HIV? What is it about Heartland Cares? The, the, I, the reactions that I get when I say HIV AIDS is, do we have that problem here? Do we, are there really that many people? And it's yes, there are. And it's, I know in the senior groups, it is becoming a real problem because you know seniors are beyond the age of ch uh, childbearing years and mm -hmm. they don't realize that they've got to watch for things like this but I'm appalled at the reaction at, at, it's it's just a disease mm -hmm. it's a disease we've handled other diseases we've handled um, hospital infections mm -hmm. you wash your hands you and you don't you don't get HIV AIDS from touching and hugging and being close to people mm -hmm. yeah. and I think this is this is so important for everyone to know for everyone so and that's that's really interesting um, uh, in your circle of friends mm -hmm. the se seniors mm -hmm. not that that's your only circle yeah. of friends of mm -hmm. course but do they ask you questions about her starting cares to. and about they're starting to Okay. And it's taken almost two years. Wow. But it's, it's, now it's to the point where, oh, you work over there at Heartland Cares. Mm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. You know, and how do you handle it? I said, well, there are people just like we are. Mm -hmm. Affectionate, loyal, mm -hmm. friendly. Great. That's conversational. And <laughs> 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 I'd like to say a little bit of something on when she was uh, <clears throat> saying, is it in Baduca? Well, of course it, it's in Baduca. It, it's more than the uh, public is really aware of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why we work so hard with anyone. It don't matter color, race, your, you know, where you're from. Mm -hmm. It's that uh, because this disease do not discriminate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The disease is, is hard enough to deal with and, and but then when you have the public think that you don't belong in a room with them or or uh, they kind of kind of make you feel like you're standing alone mm -hmm. you, you know and uh, I, for I don't think that's right in any case because this disease is like a lot of others mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know we carry it but uh, we just don't take it out of our pocket and give it to other people we want to be a part of uh, uh, the public the community we want to help people as we're helping each other and but I've seen uh, real close friends people who I love to death has backed away from me and mm -hmm. uh, and it hurts and mm -hmm. and it also hurts when the the public is so uh, not educated enough on the disease to understand it's just like the chicken pox mm -hmm. you know if you get it you got it uh, chicken pox you can get rid of but this you can't and like Miss Ann had just mentioned uh, we can't pass it on by being in the same room. Mm -hmm. Can't pass it mm -hmm. on by kissing or eating out of the same mm -hmm. plate or spoon. And to alienate okay. people in such a way, it 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 almost destroys our meaning for doing what we do. Mm -hmm. But by the help of you all and and the people that live with this and Miss Ann, the people that helps us out on a daily basis, and those out mm -hmm. there that does understand, uh, I'm not going to give up. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, because people are going to think what they want, but to get that's why we come on TV so much, as, and that's why uh, it doesn't bother me to talk about it. You know, cause, we're so glad you do talk about it, Isaac. Yeah, it's a part of me, and and it's part, it's going to be a part of me the rest of my life. If if I go by what other pe people think about me, mm -hmm. uh, I have no reason to live. You know, mm -hmm. and today I got uh, all the reason in the world to live. You know, I'm living better today than I ever have in my life. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. People reaches out to me as much as I reach out to them, but those uh, 
that don't think it matters, it does matter. Uh, they cannot never they can never uh, contract it. How do they know if they're not being tested? Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's in every family. It don't matter how much money you got or That's none of that. Right. The disease it just wants a human being to get in their system and attack their right. immune system. And we're all are considered equal on this planet. Great. And it's 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 like if you have rosacea, you have it all your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You take a pill or you take medication for it, but it's never going to go away. Mm-hmm. It's it's there. It's chronic. Mm-hmm. It's chronic, mm-hmm. and it's it's it, there are a lot of chronic diseases, and that's what this is. Right. And it's it's, I think, the transmission, I think has we've learned so much about how mm-hmm. it's transmitted that we don't need to worry so much. Definitely. That education and knowledge is yes. so important. Yes. Very. Judy, I want to talk about that baton. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that baton you picked up. Well, <laughs> a few years back, um, I had had two children, 13 months apart, and you know how it is when you're juggling the kids and you're you're trying to get the diaper bag, the kids and your purse and go from point A to point B. And I was going through super value and this gentleman was bringing in the carts and he saw me struggling trying to get the kids juggled in, <laughs> in the car seats and he came over and offered to help me. And he did and I thanked him and I was he was so wonderful and I had even let the store manager know that they had an employee that went above, you know, the call of duty in my opinion to help me out. And I didn't see him again for a while and um, I was at my church at Harrison Street Missionary Baptist Church and another time it's raining. I have the kids and the um, umbrella this time is the extra thing instead of the grocery cart. (laughs) And this gentleman comes again. He says, can I help you with something? It's my sister. And I said, oh, thank you. I said, oh, it's you again. So he was kind of like, oh gosh, here's my guardian angel in the person of Albert Parker. And Albert was, uh, one of the first persons that I knew of that was not a relative of mine, that was local, that had um, HIV at that time. And um, he was, he came off to me as this human being that had compassion for what he was living with. And he, without even trying, engaged me in what it was he was dealing with. And because uh, I was teaching at that time at Paducah Tillman High School, I thought, huh, you know, education, people don't know. People need to know about this. Everyone needs to know about this, but particularly the African-American community seemed to me as though they were satisfied. Oh, there's one or two people that we know that have the virus, like they were the poster children for it, for the community. And at that time, they didn't have a problem, the individuals that I knew that were living with it, but then I met others that did, and they were shunned by their families. Mm -hmm. Family members that were, should have had the knowledge and not the ignorance in regarding of this illness. They were ministers. They were they held prov- professional positions in companies in our area, and um, they should have known. I felt like that they had a role to play, whether they wanted to or not. So when I started um, talking with him about, well, where do you go for treatment? Where do you go for help? Uh, what types of things do you need? Maybe there's some things that you know we can help you with. You know, um, I was a, my, I'm still a member of the sorority. Our sorority, you know, was one of the first places that I found a group that could come together to work with me in regard to this cause, uh, Delta Sigma Theta. So I said, what are some things that we can do? You know, some weren't ready to get on board. Others weren't. You know, and it's kind of discouraging when you have people that are in the health field. We did a huge health fair at Washington Street Church and it went very, very well. And and um, our focus was on HIV and AIDS, getting the information out to the clergy. Mm-hmm. So from that, um, I was given information from Albert about this organization, a national organization called the Balm and Gilead mm-hmm. out of New York. And wonderful, wonderful organization and I mean, Things, people have set up organizations all around the country because of that. And we have such an organization called OMA 
the acronyms Outreach Ministries for the Healing of AIDS. Mm -hmm. And what our goals were with that organization were to get in with the clergy who has the most captive audience in our community. Sundays, Wednesdays, whenever there are different events. And the charge that I had for them was if you can minister to the sick and shut in, give communion to those that cannot come to worship, baptize babies, pray for family members that have cancer, be there of, in supporting times for those that have had an accident or befallen upon, you know, lost their job and you're there to counsel with them. Why would you not be there for those that are stricken with this disease? You cannot let it be about homosexuality. You cannot let it be about, I don't want this to be a part of who I am. You have to know the facts for yourself, first of all, I decided. And every time someone asks me, well, Judy, why are you doing this? Do you have the AIDS? Mm -hmm. I said, first of all, it isn't the AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. Well, it's someone close in your family or someone close. I said, because it exists. And I know that it does not single out an individual. It's important to me. And I've been very, very grateful for the role of the Heartland Cares Clinic and that organization from years ago when Rich began in 98, 99, how important it was to make sure Paducah was represented. Right. Not just the gay population mm -hmm. of Paducah, but the youth, the African-American, the Hispanic, mm -hmm. the young and the old, because as you, it's a full spectrum. It is. You know, they, we've all spoken to that mm -hmm. and I can really appreciate her speaking to Miss Ann about the seniors right. because it was just enlightening when I was speaking to a group and the senior citizens were sitting back. Com I said, oh, now, now. <laughs> I said, don't get too comfy and feel like, because let me show you my next screen. <laughs> and it had the statistics for those in that 65, 55 to 70. Year. I said, if you're still having sex, you're still at risk. Mm -hmm. That right. might be your most risky behavior. Okay, <laughs> and you have spouses that have passed away, and you're lonely, you still have an active sexual life, mm -hmm. you have an opportunity co to contract the virus too. So let's not shun those that we think are younger than us, that have a different lifestyle, that we feel couldn't possibly be in the same company as we are. Well, you can be. And you know, I just felt like it was important for everyone to be able to know what they were up against, what was their alternative mm -hmm. and how they could get help and not feel like their their life is just shut down as what it were. I wanted to bring something up that or, or talk more <laughs> about something you brought mm -hmm. up that I think is really important. You mentioned Rich mm -hmm. uh, and you're talking about Rich Fortenberry yes. who uh, founded the, mm -hmm. the program. He yes. started uh, Paducah Cares. He did which was the housing program in 96 mm -hmm. for persons uh, living with HIV or AIDS, yes. and then uh, wrote a planning grant to get health care into yes. our community. And um, uh, Rich is a, a, a dear friend of mine <coughs> and, and still uh, fighting as an advocate. Oh, absolutely. And um, living in Tennessee now. Mm -hmm. But um, because of, of him and, yes. and other people who were infected and affected yes. uh, was able to provide um, a program in Paducah, Kentucky that was the first Absolutely. across the state. Yes. We were the first in HIV the and AIDS program mm -hmm. across the state of Kentucky and we're now a, a model That's and we right. have other programs in Kentucky and across the nation. Yes. So that's and that's people who care and that's kind of mm -hmm. what we're talking about today yes. is why are we here and what about World AIDS Day and, and um, ha how do we make a difference for our community? Because I know that we're providing a service to this community that would be suffering if we mm -hmm. weren't here. Absolutely we would. So I appreciate you bringing that up. And I want to talk about the clergy more, but I want okay. to hear from Angie a little bit about, you know, what's, what is your motivation, Angie, <laughs> and um, why Heartland Cares and why HIV? And My motivation, I guess, is I've always... I thought I think I was born to be a helper, mm -hmm. and um, I agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, in in whatever capacity. And when I moved back from school and um, got a 
job at Heartland Cares, um, I was like an opportunity to help people. And um, I, I, through the years, I realized that when you are a helper person, you've got to know that there's a fine line between helping and enabling. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a kind of a journey, a personal journey as a helper to figure out where, where, where is that line. Mm -hmm. and, and it depends on, it's individualized. It's for each person I help, it's mm -hmm. where are they at? And uh, where do they want to be? And how can I help them get there? And um, so it's not just giving and giving and giving. It's mm -hmm. part of that giving is education, figuring out what they want to do, and giving the support. Sometimes it's just mm -hmm. being there for the person and helping them learn new things that maybe they skills that they didn't <coughs> learn um, growing up, or maybe they've lost. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And so building those skills up. And so just every day I wake up and think, okay, if I can help one person, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that you don't feel like that you've had failures throughout the day. I mean, if you've helped one person, then, then I'm good when I go home. So. And Angie mm -hmm. does a, a darn good job with that because I am one of the people that <laughs> uh, she helped. Uh, she, got, she got me in, because uh, me, I'm... I'm I go, 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 go. And, and sometimes I forget to take my medication. <clears throat> and thanks to Angie, she's worked out something like a calendar or how I need to take it or try this. Or she gave me a lot of suggestions. And they work. Mm -hmm. You know, when she goes all day, she come in, you look at her and know she's worn out. You know, when she comes in the door of mornings. But, uh, <clears throat> and that's the thing about the people that I work with at Heartland Cares, each and every one of them, is they go above and beyond a paycheck. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's having compassion for someone like yeah. myself. Not only myself, there's other people that they have compassion for. Uh, I can talk to them, anyone there at Heartland Cares, as I would talk to my family, because they are my family now. And, uh, and looking at what they do on a daily basis and how hard they work, get up exhausted but still come to work, uh, I wanted to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, Thanks for volunteering. Do you feel like it's an honor? Oh, it's a, oh yes. it's a great yes. honor. Yes. You, you know, uh, it's an honor for, you, oh, for us to have you. It's, it's a like, great oh. honor being around. First of all, people, a support group. And that's yes. everyone there at Heartland Cares. But most of all, people that's going to treat me like a human being, know that I have feelings, know mm -hmm. that I hurt, know that I cry. And uh, I can call on any given base. Don't have to be at work and need to talk to someone. Whoever answers the phone, I can talk to them. Mm -hmm. Everyone there has compassion from our doctors on down, and uh, it's amazing. And you was talking about uh, helping Paducah, you know, and I also help work outreach mm -hmm. in uh, surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. And we have so many people getting on board because now they're realizing that it's not only Paducah, surrounding counties mm -hmm. that is, uh, you see more and more positives mm -hmm. coming up. For instance, there's a treatment center I was at uh, yesterday, and uh, we'd have a young lady that works. That well, first of all, the treatment center itself has done so much, because people that uh, have have previous drug use histories, and uh, not only do they c uh, care for that now, they're helping us go into treatment centers and get these folks tested, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you'd be amazed at the smiles on there. You can give somebody an extra smile of the day by saying, hey, you know, you're negative today. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they're helping us out so much. And one particular uh, young lady that works there, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying this, uh, Miss Katrina, she works at one of these places. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping to have an, a base in uh, Mayfield Mm -hmm. to where the Latino population, anyone in Mayfield can come and get tested, mm -hmm. you know, confidentially. Uh, and we don't have, they don't have to come all the way to Paducah. We're trying to set up a place now and through with uh, Miss Christina's help mm -hmm. and our husband's, uh, it's, uh, it's happening. Right. And it's amazing right. what we can do together because mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. do this alone. Heartland mm -hmm. Coast is not going to do this alone. Mm -hmm. It's about all of us coming together and caring for those not only with HIV, with all the illnesses, and helping where we can. Absolutely, Isaac, because it is a collaborative yes, it is. approach, and it's the only mm -hmm. way, because mm -hmm. the 
the same people who are at the treatment center are the mm -hmm. same people who we're working with and the same people who are in the schools are the same people who we're working with and Absolutely. you know there are no boundaries we're no. all working with the same people right. because we're working with community yes. and this is affecting the community and, our, and even our youth groups that mm -hmm. goes to these colleges yeah. and things mm -hmm. those guys do such enormous work raising funds uh, and like you were talking about the World AIDS Day, when we go go to that, having that, they're there. You right. know, they be, they're a part of us. They don't shun on us or look down. And we don't mm -hmm. want that. We don't right. want pity or people looking. We just want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. We're human beings also. And, and they do such a tremendous job mm -hmm. raising funds, uh, going and helping people clear their lawns. And, and the youth group is, is amazing. Everyone that is involved that I know of has been amazing. Good. And right. it's, it's still going back to H, HIV 101. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's amazing to me that people still call and say, gee, I didn't know you were there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm calling from um, Jackson, Missouri. Right. I didn't know that there was any, anything like mm -hmm. this around. Mm -hmm. And can I come? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can come. Please come. <laughs> yes, please come. Please come. I'll Get a give test. you directions. <laughs> We give a lot of directions out and get a lot of calls right. from people who didn't know that there was a place like this where they can come and learn mm -hmm. and be guided. Right. Mm -hmm. The other day I was walking through our community room and there was a gentleman sitting in the um, in the community room and I was noticing the newly painted walls that were mm -hmm. painted by volunteers and I was mm -hmm. admiring how good they looked and this person said well I didn't see them before they were painted but they look really nice now and I mm -hmm. said oh and he said um, this is the first time I've ever been here and I said well thank you so much for coming oh, yeah. and he said thank you so much for being here mm -hmm. and that made my day kind of yes. like what Angie was saying it's those yes. things like that that really make yes. your day yes. so I know when I um, was uh, recruited to be the executive director of Heartland Cares. It's been over 10 years ago. Um, I had to do a lot of soul searching. I was in a job I absolutely loved that I didn't want to leave. And I questioned myself, um, did I, was I the right person and, and would I be able to handle uh, the type of issues mm -hmm. that would come up? And one of the things that I struggled with the most knowing that I'm a helper too, and, and I'm um, um, very emotional as far as how much I care, and not uh, I, which all of us are. That's mm -hmm. why we're all sitting here talking about this. But I started thinking about how do I deal with the loss? Mm -hmm. How do I deal with the loss? And we're talking mm -hmm. about World AIDS Day, and one of the things that we look at with World AIDS mm -hmm. Day is uh, that memorial for the mm -hmm. loss. And I thought, how can I? Um, allow myself to, to be attached, that family that mm -hmm. Isaac's mm -hmm. talking about, and deal with the loss. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just, I, I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll just deal with it, mm -hmm. however I have to deal with it. But um, w then what I realized when I uh, first came to Heartland Cares is we hadn't had any loss. And I thought, oh, I can do this. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. All these new medicines and everything, we don't have any yeah. loss. Of course, that time we had like 40, a little over 40 clients, for, I think like mm -hmm. 47 clients. And I thought, I can do this, I can do this. And I actually saw some people who I had heard years before had AIDS mm -hmm. and assumed that they had already died and there they were mm -hmm. and, and it was no and it was a rejo it was mm -hmm. it was a celebration mm -hmm. to see wow this is what this clinic has done but since then you know in the 10 plus years I've been there we've had over 100 deaths mm -hmm. and so the loss is still there mm -hmm. and it and it that and that's a good point you know, you know, still there. The people we have lost before me, before I got to Heartland Cares, has set this Heartland Cares up, the foundation up, uh, for people like me that came after them. Mm -hmm. And that's also what we're wanting to do today. That's why we need people to get involved. We need people to help us out the best, because we are not going to do it alone. But the foundation we set today is going to be for our use 
that's coming later mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause they will and come. that's going to have to deal with this. And the things we all get together and pitch in and do today is going to make a better future for those who contracts HIV and other diseases. Mm -hmm. You know, we just can't think about us today and we don't here, us individuals. We think about the people that's going to come after us. Mm -hmm. You know, we might not find a cure in my day, but at least I was one of them involved, you know, to help spread the word, uh, get on board, let's help. Uh, you can't live a normal life. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. and you can be undetectable. Yes. And I'm, yes. I'm undetectable now, have been for years. So that's as close to a cure yeah. as you mm -hmm. can get, yes. isn't it? But there's going to be your health. younger people, as just like today, younger than myself, that having to deal with this. I know how hard it is for me. I can I cannot imagine how hard it is for them. Yeah. And we need mm -hmm. compassion. We don't we don't need to be uh, people Judgmental. that turn their back on mm -hmm. us. Well and fifty percent yeah. of all new diagnoses are twenty five right. years are under twenty five years of age. Yes. So that's that's profound. Mm -hmm. And that there is a lot of work there and that's why we have our youth action group. Uh, who we train to right. do good prevention work, to be able to mm -hmm. test their peers and be able to educate their peers on how to reduce their mm -hmm. risk. And, and they help us out with the World mm -hmm. AIDS Day event, mm -hmm. don't they, Angie? Mm -hmm. What kind of role do they have? They do the past several years, they've done an Art for Life auction. Mm -hmm. And um, different. they collect art um, throughout the community. Some years it's been anyone. And then there's been years where um, they uh, contact the local schools and have a art project for the youth, and then we have a silent auction for that artwork. Mm -hmm. That's and, what we're doing this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we've had several people um, that bid on the art and um, and won the bid, but they donate the art back because we've had mm -hmm. uh, we have a new building. It's um, a couple years now, but still a bunch of empty walls, and so. Mm -hmm. They've donated that artwork back to the clinic, so we'd have artwork on the walls. And it's nice to, to walk through and see mm -hmm. what a five-year-old versus a 10-year-old, their, their concept of HIV. And, mm -hmm. and um, some are um, um, poetry, and mm -hmm. um, so it's not just mm -hmm. uh, paintings. So. so it's any medium. Any medium mm -hmm. of art. It's nice. Um, they have, the Youth Action Group has also, throughout the years, saved Kids Christmas one year. Um, they had a last minute a penny drive at their school and um, they, they made Christmas wonderful for uh, several children of our clients. And so you know, Kids Christmas Kids is Christmas. Mm -hmm. one of the things that we do we at the do. clinic. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about it. It started out, um, we, the employees prior to me getting there mm -hmm. bought each other Christmas presents, you know, drew names and um, had a Christmas party and in lieu of that they decided to buy presents for the children of our clients and so um, we have a tree that we um, put the, the little Christmas ornaments mm -hmm. on and, and choose a, a kid and some of us go in together and mm -hmm. so it's just a nice way to, to give back and it's an anonymous gift so the parents can put from them or from right. Santa or whatever mm -hmm. so it's a nice way to give back to the clients. And their kids. And so because we have so many children now, uh, like do. over 200 <laughs> I believe, <laughs> who are um, affected mm -hmm. um, because um, and their parents sacrifice to make sure they have as normal a life as possible. They do. The, um, because of stigma, there's some of our clients who still their family, um, um, the family was a support system before and, and they don't have that. The mm -hmm. family is like you were talking about, shun them, and so they don't have the, the normal support system that a um, parent might have. Um, and some, their partners or spouses have passed away, and so they're, they're by themselves. And some of our, our clients, they're, um, they're raising their grandchildren. Like, right. um, so they, they need some support too. And so with, um, it, my job is adherence, and so <laughs> it, 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 it's Let's more than a little bit about adherence because some people may not realize. Well, what you're it's about. keeping them on target. It is. It, people um, have lives mm -hmm. um, beyond a prescription pad, a pill, and that's not all they have to deal with. Um, they have Christmas mm -hmm. to deal with. They have job and and family and normal stressors and stigma and mm -hmm. and the financial burden of medications and so. Um, it's helping them stick to whatever their plan is with their, their physician or their case manager or housing um, their job. It's mm -hmm. just sticky, helping someone stick to a plan. And so um, figuring out how to work HIV 
your care into your life instead of it mm -hmm. becoming your life. And so right. that's, that's what So I want to go back to uh, with the kids Christmas mm -hmm. and the tree. Um, one way that the community could help is if they wanted to sponsor a child. Mm -hmm. They can. Um, we also, um, at the last minute, also need like stocking stuffers. Mm -hmm. We've had churches throughout the years who mm -hmm. we need stockings mm -hmm. and then stocking stuffers and, and wrapping paper. Wrapping paper. Mm -hmm. We usually have a wrapping party and that's pretty mm -hmm. fun. Um, and then speaking on, on the Christmas thing, it, it just brought to mind there, there are other organizations, other people that's in or other organizations that helps us, and, mm -hmm. and it surprised me the way some of these people did, does. Mm -hmm. uh, United Way is one, mm -hmm. and which they're all around the clock helping others with any you know, situation that they can, and that's so much appreciated. But also, uh, there's uh, people that goes to the drug court mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. Medica, Kentucky, mm -hmm. and I wanted to mention them because they put on a fundraiser, mm -hmm. and I, some of my friends is in drug court, and so I went out to help them mm -hmm. to do this fundraiser, not knowing what it was about. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> come to find out, it, it was for uh, one of the HIV positive families that come through Heartland Cares. They was raising funds for, awesome. and I helped them with that fundraiser, mm -hmm. washing cars. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was great. I mean, mm -hmm. my friends was there. They're doing something positive with their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, to help someone mm -hmm. else, and and I I, f I felt so much compassion from those people that does that right. you know they're my family also absolutely and uh, that's what we need more of mm -hmm. let's talk just a little bit more about the art for life because mm -hmm. there might be people in the audience who would like or are interested and would like to contribute mm -hmm. but it's it's completely open it's open mm -hmm. um, the theme we usually do it on oh, a yes. theme don't we what is the world aids day theme this year it is Access, universal access and human rights, but um, it is for everyone. I think mm -hmm. that's the important mm -hmm. thing. As far as World AIDS Day, we're trying to get everyone to come, and I don't think universal access and it has to do with just medical care. Right. It has to do with everyone coming together and having access just to testing, mm -hmm. um, just a basic mm -hmm. health care for um, folks. and. Um, the knowing of your status um, universally mm -hmm. and how empowering that is and um, as a basic human right to have that access and um, access to good health care in our clinical setting and um, being all together and united. Right. I think that's important. So, And that um, they can also not only just donate art for auction mm -hmm. but they can also enter in the art contest Mm -hmm. and that we give first, second, and third prizes mm -hmm. for. So that, that's important, too, mm -hmm. in that um, you get your artwork in. Any medium is mm -hmm. acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, if you'd like to come and tour the clinic, we have tons of, of artwork from past uh, World AIDS Day mm -hmm. events. Um, but it's, it is about raising that awareness, which mm -hmm. is what World AIDS Day is all mm -hmm. about. You know, I, when I was looking at the research of all the different themes of World AIDS Day mm -hmm. and, and when did it start and how did it start, you know, and the first World AIDS Day was 1988. So wow. we've had a lot of themes, but mm -hmm. there's a consistency with those themes. Mm -hmm. And uh, human rights is major because it, you know, different years it would focus on different group of people, whether it's men or youth or children or women or minorities or um, just it, all different people because it's all different people. But the themes are consistent in that there's been some discrimination out mm -hmm. there that's killing. Mm -hmm. yes. And so part of World AIDS Day is raise that level of awareness. Um, We've got to have a time to be able to grieve and mourn, but there's also celebration because, you know, in, in the years of, of AIDS uh, and uh, many generations now, um, you know, they, we still don't even know when it actually, um, when the first human actually contracted. And it even is, uh, looked at going back to the 1800s, early 1900s, mm -hmm. and in mm -hmm. yeah. the U.S., they think there's a case that um, might have been AIDS in '66. Mm -hmm. You know, and and then just understanding that 
AIDS came about from HIV. You know, you'd think you would have discovered HIV first, but no, people have to get sick and die and discover mm -hmm. that first. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the history, there's so much education and understanding mm -hmm. um, with, with World AIDS Day, and, and that's what it's about with World AIDS Day. And some of the things, let's talk about some of the things that we've done in the community in the past World AIDS Day and what's worked and what hasn't worked. And, what are we doing this year in addition to our World AIDS Day celebration? Because for us, World AIDS Day is, is the whole month of December. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things have worked, you know, in the past? I know in regard to OMA, when we had, and, and unfortunately, it coincided with the heat shooting, remember in 97 mm, and World AIDS Day, and we had a tremendous focus on youth because that was one of the themes and we had the Nia dancers to come and mm. their leader Rose Lowry was a surgery nurse and so she had worked all day on the children that wow. were involved in that shooting and I mean it's still when I think about it, it's really emotional because we had Tracy Maudry from Louisville Kentucky to come as a speaker a young African-American about 28 year old um, positive woman mm -hmm. had three daughters that came with her that have since carried on her message and she passed away I think about three years after she had been here mm -hmm. and the kids still remember that World AIDS mm -hmm. Day they remember they were we had I'd been out to that school that morning didn't get to heat I kept going to Reedland I went to pick up essays and um, we weren't doing it like a contest. We were just going to allow them to be able to be read mm -hmm. so that um, people would know that kids had ideas on how to deal with stigma. And stigmatism has always been one of the key themes throughout the years, too. Mm -hmm. And they saw there were not just African-American children there. There were white children there. There were some Asian children and Hispanic as well. And they were all there together, right. you know enjoying and, and, and getting the knowledge of what was there because she was very direct and straightforward and she talked to them about this mm -hmm. and how they should never be so comfortable and believe that it's always someone else because when that someone else is looking you in the mirror then you're like I don't believe this mm -hmm. and it isn't something that people deal with easily regardless of who they are or where they are in their lives as a young child or seniors citizen enjoying their retirement years. It is something that transcends across whoever, you know, happens to be falling, the illnesses be falling upon them. And the thing what really struck me is that a physician asked me who gave it to who when they were talking about a couple of people that both had the virus. I said, what do you mean? because I couldn't believe he was asking me this question. I said, well, if we knew that, wouldn't we be something? I said, the problem is not to find out who, if it isn't for medical purposes, but just to say, oh, she gave it to him or he contracted the virus because he was with him or whatever. The, the fact is, what are you prepared to do now? Mm -hmm. I love the untouchables. Mm -hmm. When he grabbed him and he had that necklace very similar to and he was like, no, what are you prepared to do? They've come for us, here we are, and we are in the trenches. There's work to be done. Are you gonna complain and say who did what? Or are you prepared to do right. something proactive mm -hmm. to help someone else before they arrive to this point? Because what I tell the kids, if we had the cure tomorrow, that would be a wonderful, tremendous thing. I would celebrate with everyone else, but I would still cry because until the ideas of how you contract a virus and the information is taken seriously enough to know that I am the person that can control myself contracting this mm -hmm. virus, mm -hmm. we will still have numbers in the millions. Mm -hmm. Four, over 480,000 are living in America with this disease right now. and. That number, I'm afraid, would not go down, would not change, even with a cure, if the ideas of I can be with whoever I want and I don't have to know their sexual history. 
you know. Well, and I think that's where our, you know, you mentioned the clergy, mm -hmm. too, and we're looking at things we've done in the past yes. and, and who can help now. Mm -hmm. And I know when um, I used to do a lot of parenting classes, and if I did a parenting class on my own, and you know, just invited someone to come to a community oh, place. Mm -hmm. Then they're like, "Oh, I don't want to show up there. Someone will think I beat my child." You know. But you know, if a, a preacher would stand up in a congregation and say, "We're going to do a parenting class in this church, and everyone here who has children needs to attend," mm -hmm. I would have a full house, Absolutely. and they would be relieved to know, "Well, I have permission to be here." Sure. Mm -hmm. And some, you know, I don't know how you, all, how do you all feel about that? You know, we need to give people permission. <laughs> and it's un it's unfortunate, but true. <clears throat> because until someone who we respect and admire steps up and says, or we feel has the authority to speak mm -hmm. on it, you know, if I was, weren't an educator, if I weren't one of the people in the community that do things in the public eye, they wouldn't take me serious. They wouldn't ask me to come and speak at different events. They wouldn't ask me to give information to their children mm -hmm. if they didn't think it was valuable. Well, see, they, they have faith and trust in their pastors, and you're very right. But they're working now. I'm very encouraged by what our pastors are doing in this community. Mm -hmm. I would really love to see more a variety of pastors mm -hmm. working. More um, ecumenical and, mm -hmm. and collaborative Yes, approach. not just by race, but by mm -hmm. which denominations, too. I would love to see that because that's unfortunately the way HIV is. It is in, in any capacity, any corner of the world, you can find it. And certainly our community is no different. So in the past, we've tried to focus on certain groups, incorporate everyone so that we could do the memorial part of it, mm -hmm. so we could do the celebratory part and the information. But, you know, the key is to the timing, you mm -hmm. know. So many people have different things that they want to do for World AIDS right. Day. And I'm encouraged that we're working on doing our everything together mm -hmm. this year for 2009. Right. And we'll have and that on our calendar on yes. our website. Mm -hmm. And so we'll everyone so who's we'll interested in participating, so that's one of the things we need the community to do is yes. to participate in as many bring things as ideas. they can. And, mm -hmm. and yes, bring ideas. But if we can, you know, challenge our churches this mm -hmm. year to um, in, encourage people to stop the blame mm -hmm. and and start working on the prevention of yes. it. How how can we work together as a community? Um, and and Miss Anna has been, <coughs> excuse me, Miss Anna has been involved in. Uh, getting me to go and speak at some churches, mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and I don't mind doing that. And mm -hmm. she's worked her tail off to get this you started. You tail off and uh, <laughs> Tell me about that. You know, that. <laughs> 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 no, I, <clears throat> I belong to a, uh, what's called Faith Partners. Uh-huh. And that's the four downtown churches have started this. Wow. It's, we've been doing this for about a year. Mm-hmm maybe two years. Um, there's training for it. But one of the problems with it that I find is that we haven't pulled in the HIV AIDS part. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what it is, it's, it's the helping people with addictions. Mm -hmm. If there's someone in the church, they can come to whoever is the representative for, for the partners mm -hmm. and talk to them. So being a healthy role model, being a right. positive role right. model. Okay. But the churches, we, we have meetings every month and we, we uh, in fact, they just had a, a walk for mm. um, partners. Mm -hmm. But, and I've just gotten re-involved in it. I've been in another, another aspect of, of what my church does. But I really push with the meetings, I really push. Come on, we need to say something about HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. We need to Thank really you. get involved mm -hmm. in that. And we need that. We need that chain. The churches to come together, not just yeah. what few we yeah. have now. All churches to come together, build that chain of hope. You know, because uh, there's people in churches that is HIV positive. Mm -hmm. You know, and and uh, <clears throat> God then don't discriminate uh, against us because we have HIV. And so why should some members of mm -hmm. a church uh, do that? Or just like, community. And it's, yeah. it's just yeah. community in right. general. Yeah. And, and sure. we need for them to link that chain of hope for mm -hmm. the people that I would love to go to church, but 
you know, I feel that they don't want me there, some churches. Mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's, he's going to be speaking Sunday evening, mm -hmm. uh, this Sunday, this coming Sunday, the oh, first wow. mm -hmm. at uh, Arcadia Methodist oh, healing good. service. And, and what so we need to put that on our calendar right. of events yeah. too, right. Isaac. That's and, wonderful. And, Thank and you. And you know, if I feel that way, there's a lot of other mm -hmm. people that isn't involved in church because mm -hmm. the put down they think they might receive by not just them saying, mm -hmm. hey, you can't come here, <clears throat> by them giving you that look and mm -hmm. having us scared to speak about HIV and AIDS in a church, friend, afraid that they're going to say, hey, don't come back. And mm -hmm. we don't want that. No. And that you not know. only happens in church. It happens right. in places like the senior center. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's in HIV is in churches. Like say, don't discriminate between color or who the yeah. human being, man, female. So why do we think that it's going to discriminate and say, hey, I'm, I'm HIV and I'm not going into that church? Mm -hmm. That's false pretenses. Because if, if a human being is in that church, it can be in that church. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, community, we need youth involvement. We need mm -hmm. our youth to help because that's one of the fastest mm -hmm. growing populations. We definitely need our seniors uh, yes. to take notice and understand that. And do a little help, too. And, and which help, I'm yes. Working on. <laughs> Bless your heart. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we need to look at um, all of our different populations that have different cultural aspects mm -hmm. to help educate us so that yes. we don't, you know, the last thing we want to do is offend someone or hurt someone's feelings. But whatever it is that's going to open up a door, mm -hmm. open mm -hmm. up a door to help people walk through. Absolutely. So what else do you all think? What call other us, ideas? Call us and give us an opportunity to come in. You, I, I say you all's environment the church's environment, uh, people that right now don't have anybody coming in and let us educate you on mm -hmm. what I live with on a daily basis mm -hmm. <coughs> or uh, mm -hmm. what we do at Heartland Care. What we can do together is more than I could ever do alone. Yeah. So call us if you need a public Please speaker, do. whether it's and an it's, employee yeah. from mm -hmm. a yes. HIV 101 right. or mm -hmm. whether you mm -hmm. want Businesses, a personal mm -hmm. testimony. Right. Businesses, or, churches, Anywhere we can go and, and mm -hmm. get this stigma, put it on the sideline and focus on what's needed. Right. Yes. And we're willing, uh, we're more than willing to go and do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Any other ideas or things that? I was just going to say throughout the years as far as World AIDS Day and as far as community involvement, um, churches, organizations, it's generally one person or a small group of people, they're interested and so it's that one small voice thing where they mm -hmm. go into their church or mm -hmm. their organization and say, I would like to get involved in this. And they may be the only person there wanting to, but p other people slowly get involved. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of how we've gotten connected with other organizations and mm -hmm. things. So if someone is call interested, we'll call mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we'll help figure out how to get in with the larger population you're wanting into. So. And it's always so surprising. Uh, Isaac mentioned United Way, and we're very fortunate to be a United mm -hmm. Way agency. Absolutely. And during campaign season, mm -hmm. we go to different uh, organizations, uh, corporations, and set up a booth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never know how you know our, the received. HIV booth is going to be received. But mm -hmm. what always surprises me is how many people come up to me and tell me the people that who they've lost or the people mm -hmm. they know. Uh, you know, I, I, I lost a nephew or I have a nephew whose family's turned him away mm -hmm. and, and I'm the only person who, who speaks to him. Or, mm -hmm. And it's this, you can tell that they're, they're hungry to talk. They want to talk because they don't know who they're safe to talk with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing that I, I think has opened my eyes even more is that we're all affected. Mm -hmm. We are all affected in one way or another. We all know someone, whether we know it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's mm -hmm. that's more the case that we don't know a lot of the time. But I think that's something that we need to change. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't we know? You know that someone we care about is suffering yeah. and, and needs yeah. a little extra support. Mm -hmm. Why don't we know? And again, that's what World AIDS Day is all about: is that recognition mm -hmm. and awareness and celebrating life and all of mm -hmm. the new discoveries that have helped people 
like right. you, Isaac, mm -hmm. be undetectable, mm -hmm. uh, but and also reduce the amount of, of death. The spread but, of it. And one big thing I did not mention, I want to mention, uh, <coughs> the schools. That's where mm -hmm. most of our use is at. <coughs> That's where they, they they're, uh, some is not willing to have that conversation brought up in schools, mm -hmm. but schools is one of the most important resources of outreach to get to these younger kids, you know, let them know, you know, protect yourself when it's time for you to have sex. And mm -hmm. to, uh, for the parents that is looking at this broadcast to go and, and, and let the schools know, yeah, I am willing to have my kids educated by mm -hmm. those who live with it, by mm -hmm. those who knows about it. Yes. And it's not promoting sex. No. It's promoting Fair protecting yourself it's and the, their health. children to mm -hmm. keep from contracting HIV as mm -hmm. I did. If someone had been to my schools in an early age, I might not be in the situation that I am. Mm -hmm. So anything we can do, schools, churches, it doesn't matter. We all need to come together and know that this disease is real. Mm -hmm. It's in our schools. It's everywhere, and if we don't uh, take the bull by the horns and, and start educating these youths, the spread is going to continue. We need to watch, listen, and learn. Watch, listen, and learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like my jewelry. You know, it's another way we can support all of this uh, mm -hmm. jewelry, my clothes, my mm -hmm. bracelet, mm -hmm. my ribbons. You know, wear a red ribbon. Mm -hmm. You know, wear it, start put it on now and, and, and don't take it off. And... Um, uh, it's it's the red ribbon is our symbol um, of of memory and and celebration and awareness for HIV and, and I keep you a know red ribbon in my car keep a red mm -hmm. ribbon in your car mm -hmm. I mean it, it the rare. the ribbons are are very telling I mean mm -hmm. we have colors people for different things we yeah. know mm -hmm. you know what people stand for mm -hmm. so you know wearing wearing the jewelry if you're going to be a consumer <laughs> a certain mm -hmm. amount of your money being a consumer is going to go towards a cause so mm -hmm. you know when Absolutely. you buy things that uh, have like breast cancer or anything mm -hmm, else, mm -hmm. if, it, if it has a cause, a certain Absolutely. amount of money is going to go to that cause. And that's one thing I do also. If there's someone at a certain uh, business and they're raising money for uh, cancer or something, mm -hmm. I always put out a dollar if I have it and give <laughs> it to mm -hmm. them. Sure. It, we need to help everybody in every area of diseases. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So wear a red ribbon. Um, if you have a youth, talk to them or talk to us mm -hmm. about the Youth Action Group mm -hmm. and getting mm -hmm. involved. Uh, please come to World AIDS Day. Uh, talk to your clergy. Talk to your businesses mm -hmm. about getting a public speaker to come in and talk about raise awareness. Mm -hmm. Let's hold hands across this community Absolutely. because together we can make a big difference. Absolutely. And and that's what it's all about. And it's, mm -hmm. it's hard sometimes. Um, uh, you feel like uh, it's a, it's a long road, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's each step, you know, that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Like what Angie was saying earlier, you know, if it's one person, if you tell one person, make a difference with one person, you know, that's important. And and most importantly, um, get a test. And if you mm -hmm. have a someone you care about, you know, someone you care about, people you care about. Uh, ask them, you know, if they've ever been tested, and, mm -hmm. and if they haven't, you know, let them know where they can go to get a test. Mm -hmm. It's free, mm -hmm. and um, that that's really good. But I, we we're done on time, and I hate that because there's always so much more to talk about. But um, let's celebrate life together. Absolutely. World AIDS Day, December first. Check yes. our website. Thank you all so You're much welcome. for sharing and being Thank here, you. and for all the hard work. You do. Appreciate y'all so much. Thank you.